Hey, I'm Andy here with Crafting with Amanda, and welcome to day 21 of Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches, featuring 31 exclusive sketches for October 2022. Today's sketch is by Jennifer Kane. I've been going through old photos from my mom in her youth, and I did an album for her for Mother's Day earlier this year, but these photos of this third birthday party showed up when I was sorting some of the others, so I just thought I had to do it. And if you missed that series that I did back in March of 2022, I used the colors green and blue as kind of the theme for the pages, and then I have a scalloped edge lace that I cut out of the charcoal cardstock, kind of, again, just as a thread to tie all the pages together. So I knew that I needed to be in the green and blue family to go in Mom's album. I found daisies as I was going through this paper pack. It's funny, this paper came from um, just a folder that I must have taken to a retreat sometime because it just had a mishmash of stuff in it. So I'm trying to honor the layout here, and to me it looks like it has a black frame around a center, and there's a lot of mixed media on this, and I just, I wasn't feeling it, and then I found this paper that has that ombre, but also some of the movement of a mixed media, and I figure at the end I'll add some speckles and get that mixed media nod to Jennifer's layout. And if you haven't seen, I love making daisies, and you can see there's a difference here between the daisies that I crimped and the ones that are flat. And so I'm just showing you here that I try to pinch them between my piercing tool and that gives them that same petal shape. I also learned that you can put those on a foam mat, kind of like a stiff um, mouse pad, and you can take that piercing tool and also crease the centers of the petals that way and it also gives them that um, bent look or I, I think it look, makes it look more realistic. So off camera I went ahead and cut out the title Happy Birthday and then the number three. Um, I don't have any die cuts that have just a small um, like to do the R and the D for a third birthday. So I wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate the three yet, but we'll get there. These birthday, um, happy birthday letters are the skinny, thin cuts from Close to My Heart. Most of what you're going to see on my channel are Close to My Heart products and tools. Not exclusive, but I've been with Close to My Heart as a uh, maker for over 16 years. So that's just what's in my studio. And here I'm going to cut ahead so you don't have to watch me spell out all of the birthday, but I'm, I dry fit a lot. I, I find that a layout can go from, oh, that's nice to, wow, when you move something just an inch. So I dry fit a lot and sometimes I hit the bullseye and sometimes I miss the mark a little bit. So, but dry fitting helps me hit the bullseye or at least get closer to it more often. So you will see me play with this number three and try to find a home for it. I didn't show you all the times that I picked up this number three and tried to find a home for it, but I wanted to give you a sense of that I really do take my time and dry fit things. You can see here the scalp lace I was telling you about cutting that charcoal cardstock. And the happy birthday that I cut out of the letters I wanted to say are two layers thick. I glue two pieces of cardstock together before I cut out the letters and it just makes them firmer and, and gives them a little more oomph on the page. As I am going to glue down all of the components of this layout, I will share with you I have just had a ball going through these old photos of my mom and her family growing up. I spoke with my aunt for about an hour and a half earlier this week to get kind of stories. Um, she had thought my grandmother had graduated from nursing with her RN in 1939, but she looked, or I have the certificate, I think, and, or no, she has the certificate, and sure enough, she read it. She's like, oh, it was 1938, and she was sharing stories about how my granddad was in the boat 
of the boys that were rescuing the doctors and nurses from this hospital when the hospital, the dams overflowed for the Ohio River and the hospital kind of got, became an island. And so um, my granddad happened to be in the boat that rescued my grandmother. I think they knew each other prior to that because one of the other stories was that they met through a nursing student friend. But what I want to encourage you on this is talk to your family about their parents, about their aunts and uncles, about your family's history. Um, one of my favorite photos that I found was actually had my mom and my aunt along with my maternal grandmother, so my mom's mom, and then both of my dad's parents. And they were all at my dad's parents' house. It must have been after my mom and dad were married. But it was just so awesome because it was basically everybody except for my granddad in one photo. And so that that's going to get a special layout here in the future. I'm very excited about it. This butterfly is from an old You Are Enough uh, campaign that Close to My Heart did. And I love butterflies. Um, I always like to say that I live in a butterfly and flowers world. I don't pay attention to the news. Um, I frustrate my mother and father-in-law in that they'll call and go, you know, there's a hurricane coming your way. Or, so you've seen about the fires when we were out in California. Um, but I just find that the news is, I don't know, I feel like it's just too, I don't want to say depressing, but it's too targeted. There's too many political things going on and, and I am a happier person by not watching the news. If that bothers you, I apologize. That's just, I like to live in my butterfly and flowers world. So I wanted to show you, I'm using, um, this is part of the new T-square ruler from Close to My Heart, and I'm actually using the grid lines on it to A, make sure that all the letters are at the same height, but then also I'm using them to help space the letters along that ruler. And I didn't get the T, I didn't get any adhesive on the bottom of the T, so that's what I was doing there. I apologize for my hat being in camera. I am growing my hair out again, and um, it just gets in my eyes when I'm crafting if I don't have a hat or a scarf. So I put the hat on yesterday. And here I'm going to go ahead and glue these photos down. Uh, I'm only putting adhesive on half of the butterfly because I didn't want it to go on the old photo. Because these we don't have negatives for. This is, this is it. This is our one and only. So I'm actually really excited to be preserving them. Um, after Hurricane Ian came through and I have friends on Facebook um, that just, they lost everything. And so preserving these memories is, is really precious and keeping them safe is important as well. So again, I'm moving that three around just to see where it's going to look best. And I needed some leaves. I had this punch that was just out on my table. Um, I also have thin cuts that I could have used, but with the punch already being out, it was just really easy. Just grabbed a scrap of paper and went to town on that. Sometimes I would have stamped like a background noise or image on these leaves just to give them some texture, but instead I'm just going to fold them in half and tuck them under the daisies here. Again, everything is dry fitting. On this particular picture, you can see the happy birthday really shows. When I do the dry or the um, still photos at the end, I think the happy birthday, it gets a little lost, but in real life, it stands out just fine. So this stamp set that I'm using is from the Cherish card working, card making workshop that's in the current catalog. And this line stamp is from an old tag stamp that I had, but from this Cherish card making workshop that has the um, scalloped edge kind of photo mat or card base, I made cones for treats out of it um, last week for Tris Twisted Sister, and I can put a link to that video in the description. But it also has this little set of dots. And in the card workshop, they used them as kind of lines above and below their sentiment on the cards. But I love them here as kind of just a little bit of interest or noise in the background, as they say, behind these daisies. So I'm just going ahead and with the charcoal ink, 
putting in some noise, breaking up that background. And it's funny, I I find that I will go overboard, and so I'm trying to rein myself in with that, and I love how this turned out. So look at your stamp sets. You might be surprised how many have some of these little dots or things that you could use for background noise that you never saw before. I didn't see it on this stamp set until um, I just happened to be putting it away and went, oh, this is here. So take a look at your stamp set, see what you got. You might be surprised. Once I glue the leaves onto the daisies with the wet glue and they dry, then I go ahead and adhere them to my page. With adhesive runner, I just it's a little more forgiving if I want to move things around later. I can. Once it's in the um, page protector, they don't move. I have not had any problems and I'm going through my layouts now. I've taken them all out of my book, sorted them into themes, and now recreating the books. Here's the layout. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will have in the description the link to the playlist for everybody that's playing along with these 30 days of sketches for round 10 in October 2022. I will also try to include that link for the cone flower for the card making scrapbook kit from Close to My Heart. If you want to catch up with me on social media, you can do that through craftingwithamanda.ctmh.com or at crafty4manda. Have a blessed day.